How to get to the bottom of something for your business. Sharon Hornelson here, getting to the bottom of a cookie dough tub because cookie dough is delicious. Sometimes I've been known to do that with ice cream as well, just eat it right out of the carton. Get to the bottom of this. This is one of those idioms that has been around since the late 1500s. Writers have been writing about it since the late 1500s. We know it's been around for hundreds of years. Any idiom, any expression, any word that's been around for hundreds of years or even sometimes for a short period of time impacts us, our business, and if not us directly, the people that we come in contact with, right? Our customers, the, the people we uh, partner with, our vendors, our suppliers, and the people that we team up with, the people that we work with to make our businesses work. Well, get to the bottom of this, of course, means to figure out why and how something originated, how it really happened, how it started generally. How do we do that? How do we go about doing that for our business and, and even for our lives, right? Every one of us has encountered a situation where we need to figure out what the heck happened so that we know how to solve the problem. Can't solve problems based on symptoms. You know, many industries do that. We look at the entire medical industry. It's, it's predicated on finding your illness and getting a diagnosis and then treating that diagnosis. But what happens in the situations where they, they can't uncover the root cause of something? If someone goes to the doctor and they're feeling sad and upset and depressed, they get a medication. When I went to the doctor with um, arthritic and systemic problems and inflammation and things like that in my 20s, they couldn't figure out what was causing it, what, what had triggered those um, reactions in my body. So as they tried to figure out what was going on, I have to credit the doctors with that, they started to give me different medications that would um, alleviate the symptoms. They would, they would take the inflammation away and they um, did all kinds of other things. I had a bunch of, of systemic health challenges in my, my early 20s. And it turns out that by masking the symptoms, I started to get sicker and sicker and sicker to the point of being bedridden for several years because the side effects and the known effects of the medications created more challenges for my body to try to compete with than just solving and curing and fixing the underlying illnesses that were making me sick and giving me the symptoms in the first place. We do that in our lives and our businesses all the time, right? There's, there's this personal prejudice where we see what we want to see or we only are able to see as human beings what we've experienced before or what we're willing to look at and see. And that gives us all this, this um, raiders and buyers and uh, um, analyzers prejudice when we're looking at challenges, especially with our own businesses. I definitely have had blind spots for different parts of my businesses in the past, but I learned early on that it's really important to be open to seeing the possibilities and really trying to investigate and figure out what is going on? I come from a manufacturing background, so it's a little more cut and dried in terms of being able to analyze, process, analyze processes, test them, and figure out what's really going on. But a lot of my career was spent as a quality manager, a quality director, or in the field of quality. And you know that involves investigating and handling and dealing with customer concerns and customer complaints. And one of the customer complaints and customer um, reports that I really changed my mind about the importance of investigating, the importance of looking for what's really going on, looking for the underlying cause. And it almost always lies in a process or a system, not in people. Although people and emotions tend to take the blame for everything, it almost always is because we're doing something a certain way, sometimes the way we've always done it, sometimes the way we started doing it, but over time things have changed, we need to change that process. We find out that it's always a system, it's not people, it's not a person. So when we're online and we see all these personal attacks and these uh, arguments, it's all just smoke and mirrors. It's the tip of the iceberg. It's not getting to the root cause of the problem. So I say let's let go of all that and let's really dig down and find out what is the root cause? What is really the root cause of these things? Not all the emotions that are tied up in the, the expression. Uh, and one of those complaints, one of the, the challenges that I had to investigate that really changed my mind was a lady had called about her daughter's graduation cake and it had, they cut into it and there were flies and fly larvae in it. And it, I believe it was fruit flies, I can't remember. I think it was fruit flies back then. If you know fruit flies are teenier. And 
um, you know, everyone that I worked with blew up and said, you know, that can't possibly be, it's impossible, there's no way it could happen. And I said, okay, everybody take it down a notch because everybody was all upset about this, this allegation. And I'm like, Let's, let me do my job, let me do a, a root cause analysis and an, an investigation because whenever we had a quality comment or concern, we use a process to follow. We follow an investigative process that helps us to dig down through the layers of what's really going on. Not what we suspect or we emotionally, you know, the person who was the head of that department blew a gasket, they're like, that's not possible, it couldn't possibly happen. So I pretended I was a cake and I went back through backwards because sometimes when we go through our processes backwards, we see things that we don't see when we go through them the, the way they, they usually go through frontwards. So I went through the process backwards and discovered, yes, indeed, there were there was a place in the process where the cakes, when they came out of the oven, were set to cool and they were set in open cabinets and that open cabinet area just happened to be in proximity to our loading dock. It was a big manufacturing bakery. And that meant that it was entirely possible that flies and fruit flies could enter that area because it wasn't totally 100% screened off. And how much room does a little fruit fly need to fly through? Not very much, right? It wasn't totally separated from that area. So it was indeed possible for that event to have happened, right? Un improbable because uh, the, the next step in the process was a freezing process and people falsely believe that you can heat and freeze certain things out of existence and it's absolutely positively not true. Allergens for example, the protein that is in, causes the allergic reaction in people, there is no way to heat or freeze or chemically treat that away. So if your, if your manufacturing plant produces a product that has allergens in it, there's no way to clean away that part of the protein that, that triggers the allergy in people. And so you, you have to totally separate that, have different lines. And once it's contaminated, it's contaminated forever. There's no way to clean that. And I, people can argue with me about that, but I spent you know, 10 years just studying and testing and trying and figuring that out and learned and figured that this was true. And you know, people that own manufacturing companies, it's expensive to have two plants, right? Hershey's found that they had to have two plants. Why? Because if you have nut in your Hershey bars and you don't have nuts in your Hershey bars, people that are allergic to nuts can die if they have any of that protein that's in the nut family, right? So it's, it's imperative that we find out the root cause. And you do that by having a process for investigating and asking questions. But the first question is to ask yourself, what if this was possible? Could this happen? And then dig down to the real reason that it it did and began and and take out the emotionally charged and the belief related thoughts around the argument because they cloud the issue just like putting a band-aid on a, a sickness or an illness or a cut it heals the cut but it doesn't tell us how you got the cut in the first place in order to prevent it from happening in the future we need to make sure we eliminate the source of how the cut occurred especially in a repetitive manufacturing type environment so that's our idiom for today. Love to know your expression and your experience with getting to the bottom of something. I guarantee I've used this one my whole life and will continue to use it because I understand firsthand the importance of really getting to the heart of the matter and, and dealing with the real issues, not all of the, the fluff and flurry that's on top of it. If I can help you in any way, if there's an idiom you want to know the meaning of, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow with another interesting idiom. What does it mean, where did it come from, and how might you apply it to your business and your life right now? Take care. I'm gonna go get to the bottom of that chocolate chip cookie.